in rise of kingdoms you can't always choose which skill gets upgraded whenever you have enough sculptures to add an additional skill point to any given commander now luckily there are still a couple of ways that you can control which skills get upgraded and for the scenarios where you can't control it there are items called skill resets now they are pretty rare so later in the video i'm gonna go over which commanders you should be saving these for because these items can save you literally hundreds of legendary commander sculptures with just a little bit of luck and so you definitely don't want to waste these on the wrong commanders but first what's going on guys cheers okay now the first thing we're gonna go over here is how this skill upgrade system actually works in rise of kingdoms now this section is exclusively for brand new players if you've been playing the game for years use the chapters down below so you can skip to the part of the video that you actually care about because the odds are you'll probably know most of what we're going to cover in this section now for those of you that don't know or maybe you forgot here's a little bit of a refresher this is how many legendary commander sculptures or epic elite or advanced it's going to take to add additional skills to a given commander so all legendary commanders follow the same pattern here all epic commanders follow the same pattern here and this has never changed since the beginning of the game so let's go over to my banana helmet here and let's have a little bit of a quiz shall we how many skill points have i added to my edward of woodstock the correct answer is six because i've added four skill points to my active skill and i've added one skill point to the following two skills remember just unlocking a skill makes it get one point you start at skill point one so if we go back to the chart here that means the last time i added a skill on edward it costed 30 sculptures and my next skill should cost 40. so let's go ahead and see if that's accurate and yes as we can see it'll take 40 sculptures for my next skill now how do we know which of these skills is going to be upgraded well of course the first skill the active skill is already maxed out because it's already at five so is my next skill upgrade going to go in my second skill or is it going to go into my third skill or is it going to unlock the fourth skill that's a question that a lot of new players actually have well the answer is very simple first of all if a skill is in gray that means you don't even have it unlocked yet so for example if we go back to pyrus is third and fourth skill i don't even have unlocked so if i were to add an additional skill to my pyrus there's only one skill that could possibly be upgraded and that would be the second skill because the first skill is already maxed i can't upgrade that any farther and i haven't even unlocked the other ones so if i get 30 sculptures for pyrus the second skill is the only skill that could possibly be upgraded and knowing this is actually really good and important information because let's say that the first two skills on a commander are the two skills that you care the most about and that is pretty common i mean we can even look at artemisia for example i made an entire video about this actually it just recently check out my channel where i go over all the minimum skill distributions for all the commanders which is why we're talking about that in this video but for example artemisia at 5511 is a really good distribution and so you would want to guarantee that you get those first two skills because those are the ones that you care the most about and so one strategy that you could do is what i've done here with pyrus and that is simply do not unlock the third and fourth skill now the downside of that is you can't bring your uh, commander to max level which is 60. okay now why is this well if we go ahead and take a look here at the star level you unlock your second third and fourth skills by getting your second third and fourth stars pretty simple right but the only way to get the maximum amount of talent points is to get your commander to six stars and get them to level 60 and you need that if you want to fight in the open field basically there's just no way you're going to fight without full talents because that's literally almost like free value so the downside of just not unlocking the last two skills until the second and first skill are maxed is that you can't use them as a primary commander and so for some commanders that's not that big of a deal but let's go back to the example of artemisia well her fourth skill actually does something if you did pair her with Boudica prime for example then you kind of remove this negative portion and you gain a really solid buff here okay even just by unlocking this skill you actually get a really powerful 25 percent damage bonus for five seconds and so having this skill unlocked would be very beneficial but let's say that i didn't finish the second skill yet but i still wanted to unlock this well i actually have another tool that we can use and that's called the skill lock feature now i'm going to use edward of woodstock once again to demonstrate this example but if you go over to this little gear with the lock next to it you can click that and you can actually lock your skills now this is a sliding scale so unfortunately the skill lock system doesn't let you specifically pick which skills can be unlocked but it is kind of a sliding scale and so what that means is 
if I set this to one, that means the only skill that could be upgraded is the active skill. And if I do that, that's kind of stupid because I've already maxed it out. And so there's nothing I can do. However, if I slide this to two and I click save now, what that means is if I add a skill to Edward, it will guaranteed go on the second skill. Why the first skill is maxed. Can't add any skills there. And the third skill is locked. I can't add a skill point to a locked skill. And so the only available option is the second skill. And so here we can see a sort of loophole for the art amnesia that we discussed before in that, let's say I didn't finish her second skill yet. I could still, uh, basically go ahead and bring her all the way to max level. If I wanted to use her as a primary, nobody does, but I'm just using this as an example. I could unlock all of her skills and then pull this back down to two. And then boom, I'm guaranteed to only upgrade the first two skills, which is what I care about. And I'll still have the fourth skill unlocked. Another example of this is my Pakal, right? Now, this is not a commander that I'm actively working on anymore, but if I wanted to, I could bring him to level 60 and I have all of his skills unlocked. But the only skill that I would upgrade is the second one, which is the one that I would care the most about if I cared about this commander at all. And of course, because this is a sliding scale, we can apply this to the third skill as well. Let's say you want the 5551 configuration but you still want to unlock that last skill well you can lock the fourth skill and then the first three will be upgraded whenever you add a skill point and that's what people do typically with commanders such as saladin or you could do this with a commander such as william or you could do this with even commanders as you're working on them for example cpo prime so there's a lot of really good examples of the 5551 configuration but what happens if you care about the fourth skill and that's the entire point of this video is getting that fourth skill or let's say you want to skip the second skill right there's an example with uh guan yu who i actually do have maxed out but a lot of players want to skip this second skill so how do you skip those skills that's the question and as you can see here with my Tarek, i've done that i've skipped this the third skill same thing with my Nebu. I've skipped the third skill. And these are skills that people generally just don't want. Same thing with my Mulan. I've skipped the third skill. And I'll be honest with you, I just got lucky with my Mulan. But this is where the skill reset item comes from. Now, basically, what you would do is you would accumulate enough sculptures to get you 12 skill points, right? Remember, just unlocking a skill puts it at one, which means I've put four skill points in three skills. So four eight and 12 skill points in total and so if you add 12 skill points to a commander you can do the math and you can add up everything here and what you'll find is that it costs 380 legendary commander sculptures plus the 10 you need to actually summon the commander and so 380 is a lot but if you take a look at the last four skill points these two are 150 these two are 160 that's 310 sculptures for the last four skill points and so if there's a skill that you personally will find completely useless so for example me i'm not a rally leader right so i have literally no use for this skill and so therefore if i can get the three skills that i care about for 380 sculptures well then the only thing i'm missing for the other 310 is the expertise and that's 300 damage factor really it's not worth 310 legendary commander sculptures for 300 damage factor plus the additional i know there's a little bit more there but like let's look at example for an example there's nebu um he gets 500 damage factor and i get to skip this skill so for 310 sculptures is 500 damage factor worth it the answer in my mind is no right so if you can get the 12 skill points added to the three skills that you care the most about you could effectively save 310 legendary commander sculptures but the problem is that the skill lock system doesn't let you skip a skill of your choosing if it's the second or the third skill so using the example of Tarek, you would add your first four skill points to the active skill that's always your most important skill and so you want to make sure that you max that for him i do care about the second skill so then i would unlock the second skill i would add four points to that as well and then you would fully unlock all of his skills and then at this point the last four skill ups have a 50 50 chance of going into the skill that you care about and so you have to win that 50 50 four times in a row and so the probability of getting that is pretty low and so you can see why like having these skill resets it's still a gamble but at least you get the chance to do it right now of course you do get one chance for free and that is as you're leveling up the commander you get to unlock the skills in whatever order that you can do right so you would hopefully do it the right way as i've explained earlier in this video 
And if you don't get the skill distribution that you want, then you can come in and use a skill reset item if you have them. And so now that you know how many sculptures are on the line here, 310 is a big deal. You want to make sure that you save those sculptures on a commander where it really matters the most. And so there are a couple of examples that we're going to go over here in this video. One commander that I haven't mentioned yet in this video is Joan of Arc. And this is this commander, Joan of Arc Prime is probably the number one place you want to use your skill reset items and that's because you get so much value out of her fourth skill it is actually insane the fourth skill gives you a 100 percent chance of activating her active skill a second time with a 10 second cooldown that is insane because it's a 2000 damage factor three target aoe plus there's some buffing here as well and this will pop on your first skill cycle so your primary commander uses their active skill then joan casts her skill then this triggers and she casts it again and then if you want you could just run away you've gotten the max value out of that right which is great the kicker with joan of arc prime is that you could kind of actually skip the second and the third skill and so what does that mean well that means that you need four skill points here and you need four skill points here and so if you, we come back over to the chart that's only eight skill points so let's see okay so we have 80 here and if you do the math that's 190. so you you're telling me you can get most of the value out of joan of arc prime for 190 legendary commander sculptures that's actually insane but the answer is yes the only downside is that it's really hard to do that okay because what you would do is you would skill lock the first skill get this to five then you would unlock all of her skills and then you would add four more skill points and for those four skill points you you have a 33 percent chance of having it land on the fourth skill and you have to do that four times in a row and so the probability of getting a five one one five joan is really low is a 33 percent chance four consecutive times okay so you got to get really lucky to get that and because you have to get so lucky to get the 5115 you're going to probably need all of your skill resets to get that on your Joan of our prime right like that's probably it's going to take a lot of different trials i think i used 12 skill resets just to get the 5515 on my nebu and that's a 50 percent chance four times instead of a 33 percent chance four times so it's actually even harder to get joan right so this commander is probably the number one place that you want to use your skill reset items now if you want to have a slightly easier time doing this then you could bring it a 5515 and of course that costs more sculptures but you're only using you know in theory you would be using fewer skill resets because you would be doing a 50 50 four times in a row like i said with nebu so that's another route you could take but i would recommend joan of arc prime being the number one place to use your skill reset items because you can get a ton of value out of her for a very small amount of sculptures if you can get really lucky the second place the second best place that i think you can use your sculpture your skill reset items is guan yu now the reason for this is because if you're running more than one infantry army these days then you're running guan yu since guan yu is a second army commander these days he's no longer best in slot okay he's reserved for your second best infantry army uh, that means that more players than ever are not going to want to be expertising him and really nobody ever really wanted to expertise him but if there was ever a time to save sculptures on guan yu it is right now because he could be getting power crept out of the meta with the next infantry cycle and so the second skill is a skill that you do not need at all because this doesn't do anything in the open field you're not going to be using guan yu to rally a flag or to rally a city or anything like that there's just no point and so really you, you have to get really lucky here because unlike the nebu and unlike the Tarek, the second skill here is the one that is going to be the one that you're skipping and so you really want a 5155 configuration here which means four of your skill points are guaranteed to go into the active skill but then you're forced to unlock all of them and that means for the next eight skill ups you have to avoid the second skill right and that means there's a 33 percent chance that you could get a skill point going in the wrong skill for the next eight consecutive upgrades right which it's really hard to get a 5155 guan yu right and so because the probabilities are against you just like with the joan of arc prime guan yu is in my mind uh, a very very good candidate for the skill resets and really it's only worth it if you're running more than one infantry army these days which some players really aren't so that's why his priority goes below joan of arc prime because i think 
even if you're only running one cavalry army you're probably running joan of arc prime whether it's with nevsky primary or whether it's huo primary whoever it is you're probably running joan of arc prime now if you've made it this far in the video and you're still wondering like okay who else can i use skill resets on we're gonna go over that in just a second but i will say that between joan of arc and guan yu you'll probably unless you're mega lucky you're probably going to use dozens of skill resets like literally dozens and if you're a free-to-play player you're probably only going to get your hands on one or two of these a year okay and i said they were rare and i meant it that unless something changes in 2024 they really only give them out for like the anniversary event the one you know every year when there's a birthday for rise of kingdoms i know it comes around for that there might be one or two other events throughout the year that you might be able to get your hands on one i'm really i don't keep track of it too much because i don't really use them very much but i know for sure that there are some free to play ways to get them now there's also the gem rush event okay you get a skill reset item for recharging 1000 gems that's that's 1000 gems boys that is literally the five dollar daily special offer so luckily if you're a low spender it is actually pretty easy to get your hands on these skill resets also when they do a recharge rewards typically there is a skill reset on i think the first or second unlock of that event as well so if you're a low spender medium spender whatever then you're going to get your hands on way more of these throughout the year but they're still pretty rare when you have to consider that you may need dozens of them all right so let's say that your joan of arc prime and your guan yu are fine who else should you be using your skill resets on well there's a rule of thumb that i typically like to follow and that would be whoever the current rally or garrison meta is if they can perform well in the open field and so i gave two examples earlier i've used tark in the open field for my last kvk he did pretty well okay we've got 5.2 million kills this was i think just literally one kvk with him maybe a little bit of the last one i don't really remember but he did okay right i think i think he was completely fine so because he has a third skill that i don't care about but the rest of his kit is decent in the open field I used some skill resets on my Tarek. Does it actually say here? It doesn't, unfortunately. That would have been really cool. Also, back in the day when Nebu was kind of like the latest and greatest thing, I used some skill resets on my Nebu as well. I got him at uh, 5515 and I used him in the open field with YSG a ton and it was amazing. I had a great time and I got a lot of value out of those 380 legendary commander sculptures. Now I probably wouldn't recommend doing that for Nebu these days unless you are a archer main mega whale who's building your seven army lineup and for some reason you don't have Nebu yet because you're new to the game then maybe but for 99.9999 percent of the players Nebu is no longer somebody that I would consider that for but Whoever the current rally and garrison meta is that works in the open field, I would consider doing it. So for example, a lot of players probably did a five, five, one, five Zhang Yu back in the day and skipped that third skill. Cause it's for rallies and they just used him as an open field commander. That's totally fine today in the current meta. You could argue that Gorgo would be a great option for a five, five, one, five, right? Because the first skill is great. The second skill doesn't have anything to do with garrison. Third skill is completely only for garrison. And then the fourth skill has nothing to do with garrison as well and so if you wanted to use gorgo in the open field well a 5515 would be great and you probably could use some skill resets on her to get her to that configuration additionally her expertise is really good but it's only under 50 percent and so this works great in garrisons and it does work nice in the open field as well except typically you want to retreat under 50 percent anyway right and so if you're playing effectively in, in the open field you probably won't even use this that much if you can actually retreat which is something gorgo has trouble with but i think right now gorgo is a great option for a 5515 to use your skill resets for now if we look at the current rally meta for ashurbanipal or for justinian you can see that the trend doesn't really hold up here super well because the third skill for Justinian does give you some nice stats. The fourth skill is nice as well. So, but you know, you don't necessarily need to skip the second skill because you do get some value there. Same thing with Ashurbanipal, the third skill, you still get some value there. So you don't like need to skip it, even though you might want to. Whereas with Gorgo, you need to skip this. There's literally no value here at all. But I think that's kind of just a coincidence that the current meta right now has something semi-useful on the third skill. I think you'll notice moving forward 
once we start to look at some of the rally and garrison commanders moving forward and just to be clear it's like mostly rally commanders G gorgo is kind of an exception most of the time you don't use garrison commanders in the open field right so just keep that in mind most of the time this applies mainly to rally commanders like Justinian, Ashurbanipal, Nebu, Tarek, right? Like I've mentioned before, but I can imagine moving forward, you know, the next commander release cycle, it could be the case that if they get a rally commander, well, that commander could be a prime candidate for a skill reset if you want to skip their second or third skills now if you have some skill resets just lying around and all the commanders you care about are already in the position that you want them in and you're trying to think of what are some other things that you could use these on right some other commanders well you could go back to your Mehmed, right i think Mehmed is a great choice for a skill reset i wouldn't typically recommend doing it for Mehmed because eventually you will max him out and he's not really a meta commander but like, let's say you, you just want to get the last skill to five for whatever reason for sunset cannon or something to have the most amount of troops on the battlefield. There you go. You could use your skill resets there. I guess you could do the same thing with Charles Martel if you wanted to skip the third skill again, I, these are gold key commanders. I wouldn't really recommend it unless you had a ton of these skill resets left over. Really the better thing to do would be to just save them for future commanders, right? But I'm just trying to give you guys some other ideas as to things that you could consider. Now, one thing that I actually did was I used a skill reset on my Constantine because when I unlocked these skills here, I got pretty unlucky and I got a five, five, three, one. And I actually do use Constantine in my sunset Canyon. And I just have nothing else. Like I have 19 of these, right? So I figured, you know what, let me get some value out of it. And I skill reset it. So that way the fourth skill is at three. And this means that the healing factor I'm going to get in Sunset Canyon is way stronger, right? And also when and if I get a shield from my nearby CPO Prime, I'm going to take 20% less skill damage for three seconds, which is really nice. The probability that Constantine gets one is probably going to be pretty high because I'm pretty sure it's based on units remaining and my Constantine will probably be one of the lower uh, health units in the Sunset Canyon lineup at that given time. So skill resets for this were actually pretty useful for me. So consider that as well. But other than those small examples that I just gave, I would say if you're at this point in the video, just save the rest of your skill resets for future commanders. I'm sure there will be more that come into the game that you will have a skill that you want to skip and save 310 legendary commander sculptures for. And that could be really useful. Anyway, guys, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, I hope you'll drop a thumbs up on it. It really helps out the channel a ton and it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm. So other rise of kingdoms players might see it while you're down there comment down below what commanders you think are the best to use skill resets on and have you gotten lucky with your skill distributions i would love to hear from you guys and while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace